Hey everybody, Adam Savage, and yes, it says Pinocchio above me, and we're about to go through an exhibit about Guillermo del Toro's film Pinocchio, but we're not in a film museum. We are in the Museum of Modern Art. And in fact, that is totally where the objects from this film belong. Curator Ron Magliazzi has assembled a journey through the production of Pinocchio, celebrating all of the craftsmanship from development to completion that is involved in making a film as intricate and magnificent as Pinocchio. And he gave me a walkthrough and it's stunning. So let's go. Ron, thank you so much for having me here. I've thank you for coming. Catching just a glimpse and it feels like my whole history of working in film is in this room and so much more. Do you want to take me on a, on a, on a, on a tour? Yeah, I mean, so we got a call in November 2021. Yeah asking if we were interested in going to Portland and to see if we thought there was an exhibition that could come out of what was being done for Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. In this case, we went, flew to Portland, we went, met with Guillermo and Mark Gustafson, the directors of the film, and talked about what the exhibition might be, yeah. which was craft process and collaboration. And the next day we went into the um, Shadow Machine studio and started a tour behind the scenes and on the set. And that's what this exhibition is about that tour that we first had, my co-organizer, Brittany Shaw and I. And as you were sort of taking all this information in, was was a layout starting to occur to you or a way in which you, because I noticed you have many, many different styles of displaying the work from this production on the walls. Yeah, I mean, it was simple. The first space in this gallery is the behind the scenes space at the studio. Mm -hmm. this, they had two big buildings. One was the fabricating shop. We watched people fabricating yeah. the inside of the uh, dogfish's mouth, for instance, painting things. Um, we saw things in different sizes. And then there was this visit to the studio itself, watching the animators on the set. And we basically brought that here. The space, this is the look development area. The second part of the show in the other gallery is the um, studio visit that we made. We tried to replicate that. It's not an exhibition about the film. Yeah, uh, We hadn't seen the film, we had no idea, even if the film would be good. It was Guillermo, so we were <laughs> yeah. pretty confident that yeah. even, if, even if it didn't, wasn't critical success, it was gonna be great. Yeah. The exhibition was about uh, the craft process and, and tradition. It would survive on its own and be interesting on its own. It's just, it, it's a window into the process that is, is in my head, but I don't often see it made extant. Yeah, well, there was so much material there and they were telling us, if you don't take some of this stuff, it's gonna be, we're gonna get rid of it. We can't keep all of it. And we knew we didn't have a massive gallery, so we, we were just astonished at what they went through. Yeah. They built, everything was built for this film. Everything, right. Every scratch. little, every nail, every... And every look and every development, every movement was tested and plotted right. out by a number of different people. And so you see that in the motion tests and the stop motion. There are wings there on the wall, those two wings in the case. Yeah. Those are the ends of two by fours that are trimmed and glued together. The Wait, seriously? Yes, this piece here. So those are the ends of two by fours. Oh, so you're right, trimmed. look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and they're shaped, and that's what, that's one of the first pieces we said, this is gonna be in the exhibition. Wow, <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. A little bit of mirroring here to show you that they were using whatever they could find. Right, cardboard tubing. Tubing, and... cereal boxes. Yeah. Uh, this film was made during the pandemic, and a lot of the look development and crafting was made in people's homes yeah. at home. They yeah. were quarantined. That must that's, have been really hard. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Um, so everything that looks like wood and stone is actually not real wood and stone. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's fabricated. <laughs> if you look at the back of it, you see it's a piece of cardboard. I want to talk about the wings because you, you've got some other wings in development over yes. here. Like I get these textures. You're sort of telling the whole story of how how the god comes to comes to fruition. Yeah, it's this is all testing and look development for the wood sprite and for the death character. Wings, three figures are kind of the evolution of the wood spirit. You see there, that was obviously made in someone's home yeah. with foam and, and, and then the um, sequential until you get to the final model. Yeah, I always love these interim models because you get to see, it's like that hero's journey. You get to see a little bit of what the end looks like but you can see farther than they can see at that moment. So it's this lovely thing. Yeah, yeah. That's a good example of something that was right next to the trash can. I mean, right, basically right. going to be thrown away. We said, don't, we want that. Well, I mean, having worked in shops, I know that everyone in the shop loves an object like that, but it's rare to see it brought out and celebrated in a space like this. Yeah, I mean, 
it was a very joyful experience because every time we expressed delight at something like that, the person that crafted it, their eyes lit up. I mean, it was a really a love, love situation. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about the, le- the, the, the sea mines here because it is such a, um, the scale of this is really unique in this room and it makes me feel when I look at these, like I'm underwater. <laughs> yeah, that was the idea. And that's another example of taking production art and installing it in a sculptural way that makes it feel like it belongs at MoMA. It's Mm -hmm. artful. (laughs) We did that with the pizza boxes outside. Yeah. Uh, We did it with this piece and um, even with the hanging Pinocchio. The pizza boxes feel almost like a Warhol. Yes. Well, that was kind of the idea. And those are the actual pizza boxes that they use. They store the heads in the pizza boxes. That's not a conceit. No, 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 no. no. Those are pizza boxes that came from the studio. If you look at the side of the box, it says, it describes what mouth shape you're looking at. Amazing. Uh, They were... You know, Pinocchio was was wood, so he had to be. A, he's, those are three D computer generated heads. Yeah, there were eight hundred and seventy of them in the film. Um, Each one was. replaced for every. Yeah, single and the frame. animator would call up the day he needed. I need a smile and a frown today, <laughs> and they would take them out of the pizza boxes, put them in interim boxes. We have one downstairs, and then deliver it to the to the set. Oh my gosh! And the animated was face replacement. You know, replacement animation. Over here, you have to stand, set out some of the molds. Uh, the mold yes. making process of casting different parts of the characters in urethane and resins. But you have like set these up like religious icons. Yeah, I mean, this is, a, when we saw this, this piece in the studio, we said, this is exactly how we visualized <laughs> it. And then we, I mean, they basically let us loose in the studio behind the scenes. And yeah. back in the corner, there was a whole shelf of these blocks. When you put these things together, they're just a solid gray mm-hmm. block. And mm-hmm. we opened them, kept opening them up and discovering these um, amazing shape and thing. And we took our cell phones and with a flashlight and put the light behind yeah. it as we were making selections. Oh, well, and, I mean, and you know, you cast in the clear resin so you can see how your resin is filling the mold. But there's also like, frankly, from a mold making standpoint, you've got one type of uh, setting up a mold with the dots. You've got another kind with a, with a border. You've got a third kind with a jeweler's cut and flat side, <laughs> regular jeweler's cut, standard. I mean, it's like a, 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 a full education in mold making. Yeah. And it turns out that Guillermo started his career as a mold maker. So he was particularly delighted that we had chosen the molds to, to put in the show. And again, this is another example of installing them in an artful way that that gives them um, more of an impact in an art museum like this. Um, I, I also love seeing uh, our sea creature in his early iteration and his final form. Yeah, the first time we saw him, we went in November, he was one piece. We came back in April and they'd cut him into, into these pieces to do this motion test, which you see here. This is how the foam figure was used. Wow. This is something that would not have survived if we hadn't chosen it for the exhibition, probably. And in fact, sadly, a lot of the material, the stuff in this exhibition doesn't have a long life. I mean, this is a silicone thing. Silicone doesn't last a long time. They're not archival. Yeah, they're not archival. And it's very uh, great challenge to, um, to preserve them. And that's why these puppets during production were in and out of the puppet hospital. Right, Every right, time right. they've been animated, they need to go back and have things fixed. A little arm bends through, comes through an elbow and things like yeah. that. Um, is there a particular part of this room that, uh, that I have not alighted upon that you're really happy with? I just, I like, I could spend hours in here. Looking well, at this I, I want to point out the rigging. Yes. <laughs> rigging and the mounting. One thing we wanted to do was hide nothing about the process. So yeah. I love the rigging. It's very sculptural and the, the rigging is going to outlive the puppet <laughs> <laughs> in a way. I mean, so every case, the rigging and the gobo lighting that we've used in the ceiling, the theatrical lighting, is something that delighted us when we went to the studio. And you maintain that in the sets as well. Well, let's get to the sets. Yes. I want to, yeah. I was so excited to see you had Geppetto's workshop in here. Yeah, it's the most, one of the most elaborately staged sets in, this, in the exhibition. The enemies don't have a lot of space around this set. They would be black drapes. Yeah. From floor to ceiling, you would pull the drapes apart and go inside, and that's where the animator works. And Sometimes coming up through trap doors in the floor. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the sets come apart, and the, we're, what you're looking at is the animation decks, yeah. just as they are at the studio with the metal legs. It's exactly the way they would be worked on. At just this height. Yes, mm-hmm. just this height. Mm-hmm. Not all of them in the exhibition. This one, yes. The detail is extraordinary, and you see things in this exhibition that you don't see in the film. You right, possibly too much detail to take in. Yeah. 
There were a couple of times watching the film, I had an almost scale vertigo because I couldn't tell what scale I was looking at. And some of the sets look deeper than any animation set I had ever yeah. seen. <laughs> yeah, scale is a big thing. You notice we have very, very tiny puppets and giant puppets. Um, and I love that you've got the lighting here on a day and night cycle. Both these galleries were lit by Frank Passington, him, the film's cinematographer. So the lighting is theatrical and he stages exactly this way so that you would see, we didn't put the blue spirit visiting Pinocchio and bring him to life. Yeah. Um, but the blue light appears there as it does in the film. I also love the fact that just outside of the painted surface, it's all reverts back to plywood and drywall screws. Yeah, we want, again, lighting, the rigging is very important. Yeah. And then we've got the church. This is part of a much larger set, of I Much right? larger set, yes, which you get a glimpse of if you look at the um, time lapse above there. Yeah. There, it was one of the largest sets in the film. They could break apart so the animators go into it. Yeah. And it was much higher up. We've lowered it to the floor. It was, it's too high for this gallery. <laughs> I mean, they work in a warehouse space. Oh, so right, I see, yeah. Yes, it should yeah. be the same height as the other deck here. Yeah. And again, the detail in here is incredible. And there are little Easter egg references to Guillermo's films. Pin's Labyrinth is in the stained glass. Oh, no. s oh they had no idea. Shadow Machine dressed all of these sets for, yes, the, yes, for, the, yes. for the exhibition. Yeah, this is just a small corner. If you look at the video, you'll see of the, the whole set. Um, and I, I mean, you've, got, you've added so many little practical lighting elements as well. Actually, I mean, this is, this is to me a practical lighting masterpiece. Yes. It is, yes. And the lighting rigs above of there is exactly- That's exactly the how they did. Yes, ex oh. there's a, a rig from the studio, exactly. Wow, we I just that. love it with the plywood and the armature yeah. wire and it's, plumbers. It's as important oh. as the puppets for me. Yes. I don't know why, but I've always had a soft spot for theatrical fire, the lighting <laughs> of fire. This yes. is just a particular thing. <laughs> but the, the monkeys, the monkeys little <laughs> yeah. torch. I totally want to touch stuff, not touching anything. Yeah, the mechanics of it. <laughs> the mechanics are beautiful. Yeah. Um, I particularly love the way you have laid out the entire armature of Pinocchio. The exploded Pinocchio, we The call exploded it. Pinocchio. That's a mounting masterpiece. <laughs> I don't even know how some of those pieces are mounted, except it must be like tiny, tiny wires. Yes, it is. Yeah, that was a... That was a consultation between Shadow Machine and our, our, our frame shop, how that should be mounted. We sent the board pieces out to them and they mounted on the board. So. Oh, that's great. And that, that guide that they had, that they, that their internal yes. guide yeah, 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 of what yeah, yeah. all I those mean, pieces are, like that is just, that's, I, I, that's what did I do for my pieces, right? It's yeah. like, it, it, it is a total, uh, a maker's kind of guide through an entire object. Yes. And, you know, all those guides are digital, you know, think about everything is done digitally, you know, it was really hard to find any concept art done on paper. This one piece of Mangifoco high above in the other gallery that was rolled into a ball. And I kept begging Georgina, the, the puppet master to yeah. find a piece. She came running and I found a piece. We spread it out, put that <laughs> in the show. <laughs> Um, talk to me about the, the, the murder board over here. This wonderful, this is, I've seen this in every kind of film studio I go in and I never tire of this. You think they would do this on a computer? This yeah. is scheduling the animators on the sets where they need to be in a certain day. Yeah. But it's apparently impossible to do in a computer. So at the studio, there were maybe eight to, tw to 12 of these in a space. Eight to 12 of these. Of these pieces. This is an actual one that they brought in for us, but the animators would meet in the morning in front of the boards. And they would get direction about what, where they were gonna be that day. Oh my gosh. Where they needed to go. I mean, the rubber bands mean the animator, the person needs to go from one space to another set. Oh, wow. That's what those are about. Um, and this is everything production needs to know about who is going to be where, doing what, and when. Yes, and there are, it's a lot of detail to look at, but there are people's names, uh, animators' names. You know, and these cross lines are all interdependent sets and processes that they need to pay attention to. Exactly, yeah. Wow. I, personally, I get a lot more out of a visual calendar like this and understanding the layout of a thing. I kind of agree that there's a way, there's something this gives that no computer could ever quite No, achieve. no, and it's... It's just an object. I mean, it's, it's stuff. I love stuff <laughs> and collections, and that's what this is. So it's perfect for a museum. I love this exterior set. I think I remember in the movie watching this and thinking, how big are the sets in this show? This set was huge. This is a fraction. This is yeah. another very big set. And this went way, way yes, back. Yes, the street went up on this side, the right side way up the block, and that's where Pinocchio and his and Geppetto walk at the very early scene of the film. This moment when he, when he sees the uh, Spazitura on top of the building. 
I go and just notice Spazitura. <laughs> yes, well, that's what Pinocchio's point, yes. pointing to him. You're supposed to, that's supposed to be a cue. Oh. <laughs> but we even had them install the rigging for how the banner, which, which fall, falls down on the film. Right, right. Spaz pushes it over the edge. Oh, that's great. Ron, tell me what this amazing thing is. This is um, concept art for Pinocchio's nose <laughs> yeah. growing. Um, and you can see the little paper mache, uh, I'm actually masking tape yeah. Pinocchio at the end. <laughs> Incredible. It's surreal, and it's surreal is the quality that this is the first piece that we chose for the exhibition. The very first one. The first day, within the first hour, wow. the producer walked by this in the look development area and said, this is, we finished with this, you, you won't want this for the show. And I said, don't throw it away, we do want, this is the first piece we want. <laughs> and it was sitting like this on, on, the, on the stand? Exactly like the stand. We this was, oh. yes. And then some tests on the what the internal armature might be. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, again, they have armature in them too. The yeah, yeah. You guys, you saying, I want this in the show right away within the first hour of the first day also must have set a level for their expectation about where you guys were Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. I'm a curator from MoMA. I come to them, they think, what is he going to want? He's going right. to want art, very art, artsy looking things, you yeah. know? So it was fun. I think they were surprised when we picked this up. This is magnificent. <laughs> I totally agree that it deserves a vitrine this big. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I, I would be remiss if we didn't leave this lobby and talk about <laughs> literally the elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would this, you, would you have a name for this. Yeah, it's the, uh, Gamo's name for it is the B.A. Pinocchio. The big, big ass, ass Pinocchio. Pinocchio. <laughs> there are big ass props on the show. There's one downstairs of the cricket under a jar. Now, why was Pinocchio built so large? For close up, for close up. <sighs> There's a point where they, uh, the cricket talks into his ear, talks to him. Yeah, so uh, the, he's that large so that they could properly animate Jiminy Cricket. Yes, the cricket, and, yes. And this is all there was to it. There weren't anything more than just what you see here. Wow. Just a torso in the head. You know, Guillermo, the other thing interesting about, I mean, this is, Chris Glimmy, the illustrator, Guillermo's adapted his yeah. version of what Pinocchio should look like. Um, but, but what Guillermo liked about it is, you know, Pinocchio was created by Geppetto when he was drunk. Right. So this lack of symmetry, he hasn't got, he's only got one ear, that kind of thing is right. in the puppet. <laughs> and you can see it in the, very much in this piece, yeah. because it's so big. Is there a piece of the exhibit that for you typifies uh, sort of is a, a North Star. Uh, the film is about life and death. Death gives meaning to life. That's the theme. So Well, and you start and the exhibit by saying animation, animation is a medium, not a genre, which is a beautiful way of planting a flag in the ground of what this work really is. And then, I mean, you're also commenting on the fact that many of these are not archival materials, and this is a moment in time, not necessarily a whole bunch of pieces of art just frozen for all posterity. No, no. I mean, it's... Their shelf life is to be determined. Um, it depends on how Netflix takes care of them after the yeah, tour is over. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I hope they keep them away from ultraviolet light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ron, it is such a stunning exhibition. And moreover, the way you've highlighted the craftsmanship and collaboration is really, really thrilling. Yeah, I mean, we, I was thrilled to end the exhibition on these, with all the artists involved. That's in right, the 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 are these Polaroids? Almost Polaroid. Yes. Yeah. First day on the job, they would get their photographs taken. So this was what was in their staff lounge yeah. with their break room, a smaller <laughs> version of this. So I right. said, we want this for the show. And they actually, the sign collaboration that's above the door, those signs were all over the studio behind the scenes. Things like fun, collaboration, hanging over the animated spaces. That's in amazing. The, yes, to remind them that what they were doing should be collaborative and enjoyable. That's really thrilling. I mean, it, uh, I, I talked to Guillermo about the film and he constantly talked about how the collaboration was so fruitful and how much he got out of his collaboration. Yeah, process. and we experienced that working with them doing the show. I mean, it was just great. So the collaboration continues past the film yeah, so too? The installation, it was like a month. Yeah. We just spent a month with the folks from, um, and, uh, folks from Shadow Machine with our folks here. It was very rewarding. Well, there's just, I mean, there's so much love in every object here and you have just continued it. I really thank you, man. It's thank you very much. Incredible achievement.